Conversations with Elders, hosted by yours truly, Louis Vary Blanche, welcoming you to Glastonbury Radio 432, where we will be TED Talking in Tongues with the elders of all ages, all generations, all races, cultures, and creeds, all gender, religious, or political preferences will be honored and encouraged on Glastonbury Radio 432 Conversations with Elders where it is our treasure pleasure to roll out the red carpet of golden liquid love light to you in honor of the Queendom Come soul dancing free to life's heartbeat drum in honor of mother daughter, sister, lover, priestess, goddess, friend, sharing the blessings of love's perfect stranger, Deja Vu, welcoming you to Glastonbury Radio, 432. It's too cosmic, much too cosmic, too cosmic for me. Much too cosmic. We're saying aloha, hola, aho, hello, five, five. <laughs> Hi, hi. Our brother, Dr. Mosin, is here with us again. And today we are going to start with a discussion of exis the existential components. And you were speaking of these, how their relationship to space and time. Yes. So share with us what we okay. need to understand. Yeah, basically, uh, as part of the creation that we are, our perception and cognition is based on time and space. Anything we describe, anything we um, explain, in our impression, expression, definition, and also description of all things, it's in forms of these two axes or these two com components of existential reality. And that's our reality. Now, other parts of creation in some place else where they could have different reality than us. But this is the nature of our reality, time and space. So that doesn't we, mean no. other uh, creation, other places, they are based on the same uh, perception. That's, uh, that's why existence of those living things in other planets is not even visible or is not perceivable to us. We think there's nobody there. So is it possible for us with our human capabilities to experience no time and no space? No. Because everything we have, every function we have, magnetism, electrical, cross everything time as soon as our existential reality has process, procedure, and practice, which becomes a subculture or a subconscious. So all of those, we do it in time. Our motivation in changing our feeling. Anytime we talk about change, we are talking about in time and space. Changing what we, as we talked last time, changing what we think which is our attitude mm -hmm. changing what we really know is our knowledge that's intuitive we talk about that some other time but it changing what we feel your more it's your motivation and changing what we can physically practice or do is our skill so all of these changes that you see uh, it's subject to time and space however you want to define it, in whatever language or whatever culture. <laughs> you know. Now, what happened is the only thing as part of our existence, or even you can say God, you cannot define it. it. It doesn't have those components. Nobody knows the components of the spirit nor the components of God because God doesn't have components. He created the components. So this time and space does not exist. Uh, in God, otherwise God would wear out in time, mm -hmm. or it uh, needed a space. So all of a sudden he had need. He couldn't be omni. The whole concept of omnia, omniism, would be not the chimney. So the only thing that doesn't have those components is the spirit and God, because it doesn't have time and space. Therefore, we cannot, as we talked earlier a few sessions back, we cannot define the spirit. We cannot express it say it's this or that, you know. it's the uh, essence or this and that. Because anything you mention in my cognition and my perception is subject to time and space because that's the components of my reality and us. Now, how does virtual reality become a confusion for us? Okay, now 
what happens, you know, that's, that's a very great comment you, know, you made. Uh, now, what happens in existential reality is empirical. That means it's governed by polarity. That means male and female. Now, you and I equally can see everything in nature is male and female. Mm -hmm. Can you show me anything in nature that's positive and negative? No, we can't. Because it's a male and female energy. It's that's what magnetism brings it together. It's called emotation. Now, emotation, when it's very specific, it becomes love between two people, love between two animals, and love among the trees. Otherwise, they would be in the war. <laughs> yes, they would, they would be uh, yes. at, at odds with one another. So therefore, you know, if you look, you know, now virtual reality is something illusionary invented by man. And you cannot apply it to uh, nature. That's why, you know, a lot of biologists have come, I forgot the name of a few of them, they have realizing you cannot apply physical laws to biology. It doesn't work. It's the physics has to follow biology, not biology follow the physics. Because all of the laws that we have made in physics, you can go through every one of them. And the people, nine people who really created industrial revolution and renaissance, uh, they had to delete some of the uh, empirical existential reality of the nature and one of the most important one was the spirit the spirit because they couldn't define it mm -hmm. so i have to make a law and a theory and i can when i cannot define it then i have to really believe it disregard it it doesn't exist so all of a sudden orbit of creation which is from God coming to the synergy. Synergy congeals and coagulates, becomes matter. And matter, you know, decoagulates and decongeals again, becomes synergy and goes back. And that's the open system of thermodynamics. And nine people came and they couldn't really postulate all this. Because synergy, how do I do a synergy that I get sun and air and water and food and give you an apple? But I can take the matter and burn it and show you energy. So everything from synergetic across perspective becomes all of a sudden energetic. Anything centropical becomes centropical. And these nine people, they, one of them was Francis Bacon, first thing. And then Descartes, then Newton, and then John Locke. And then we have uh, economists like Adam Smith, Karl Marx, you know, and then Theodore Herzl, and then Darwin. So all these people, they couldn't face this reality. So they eliminated the spirit. And they came and said, oh, they cannot even do the synergy. The synergy is in the nature. I can't create synergy. So they deleted that too. So all of a sudden, the human science and mentality and cognition and perception becomes matter to energy, oil to energy, gas to energy, wood to energy, which is a process of what? Energetic cognition and perception and entropy and I came and overloaded the society with that. And it becomes accumulative and not assimilative. Yes, yes. That's why we have pollution. Because the byproduct of energetic problem, which we call it entropy, is not assimilative by nature. So it becomes accumulation. That's why you notice all major cities, you know, Los Angeles, Bakersfield, New York, it keeps becoming more and more. Mm -hmm. And then if that whole postulation to, comes to our econo economy, the national deficit continuously, I wrote a book about economies that published, and all of a sudden in tropical economy, it causes more and more deficit as we go on. And as you notice, if you could look at the trend of economic trend, that deficit, it continuously coming, going that up. It doesn't come down. So is that real money or monopoly money? Is it pretend? <laughs> well, it's fake money. It's like a virtual money. Uh, you ask me, you need ten trillion dollars. I'll print it for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I believe in it, it'll have some value. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the president. You just order, <laughs> and I go, 
to my bathroom here and I have a friend there. <laughs> yeah, well, you yeah. know, in Mexico, I think it was in the early 90s, you know, the peso was usually around 12 pesos to a dollar. The peso got devalued so much that it was like thousands of pesos to create a U.S. to equal a U.S. dollar. But the local people in Mexico, that meant that for the smallest, simplest items, they had to bring lots and lots of money to pay for something because their money was so devalued. And eventually the government said, hold on, time out, time out. And they said, <laughs> we're going to reestablish the value of our money because it's becoming more and more of nothing to the point where you can't buy anything with it. <laughs> but it's like monopoly they say hold on the banker gives out that white you know the money in monopoly game i think it's pink yellow green and white yeah and you know the banker play, gives everyone money and every time you go around go you get two hundred dollars you know if you look at actually inflation mm -hmm. inflation is an economic entropy that every year has to go up to keep up with the rest of the cultural entity. But we know one, of the, one of the things that I remember a story that Buckminster Fuller told about when he was in the Navy, I think in the early, sometime, I maybe it must have been maybe 1940, I'm not sure, but a, a nice pair of all leather shoes was like $15 or something. And now that same pair of leather shoes <laughs> is $300. And he said, you know, the cow that eats the grass that we make the leather from, the sun and the rain is not any more costly. Yeah. There's no inflation involved in nature. Yeah. And the, the inflation is an entropical process. As you said, exactly what you said, you know, that there is no inflation, there is no deficit in the nature, <laughs> unless we impose on it by pollution <laughs> and all that, destroy the soils and all that stuff. Right. So these are man-made concepts that yeah. don't harmonize with the laws of nature. Absolutely. That's why all of a sudden I came, I wanted to change something, you know, so I came and overloaded masses, mentality, overload cognition overload perception it's overloaded i cannot perceive it anymore. and i know you know it's just what's going so i just go with it because i'm overloaded so that therefore you know i just uh, i blow with whichever way the wind blows right but my cognition and perception is overloaded i cannot think anymore you can't focus yeah. And, and follow your even your intuition, your uh, the voice that might want to share something with you. You can't really pay attention to it because you're so distracted by other things. Yeah. Because what happened is, look at it this way: this entropy being continuously the velocity of culture has to go increase. If you notice, when you were a little kid, everything has become every year faster has to be faster and faster and faster. Everything, look at the computer, faster and faster and faster. Everything has to process faster to keep up with that rate of entropy. So this velocity of culture, the velocity of lifestyle, all of a sudden becomes what? The stress, because from morning to um, nightfall, I'm running and running and I'm always behind. I don't have time to think, you know, So a simple life where you have time to think and appreciate nature, take your time and assimilate. You're so busy accumulating things that don't even make you happy or change your life for the, for the better. Yeah, I mean, I have never, you know, in my backyard, I have never grown any tomatoes or a cucumber because I just buy it from the store and I don't know if there is GMO or what this, or if it's magnetic or electrical attributes or nothing. I just... Happy, you know, I'm filling myself up <laughs> as fast as I can because the velocity of culture has gone. The speed of lifestyle has gone up and that becomes all of a sudden entry, psychological entropy. And there is no uh, psychology left. 
Soulcology, yes. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking about your daily use of cayenne pepper, MSM, and salt. Salt. The Himalayan salt, preferably, right? Yes. Now, how yes. do these ingredients help de-stress and, and keep our bodies from accumulating toxins? Is the, do these clear our system so that if we're eating, having emotional input and nutritious input that's not really that nutritious, how do these three ingredients serve as a great daily regimen? Well, uh, first of all, no. Number one ingredient in our existence is water. Mm -hmm. That means 75% of the body, 85% of the brain, 94% of the blood, and 98% of our nervous system is all water. So that's why the water has to... Now, the water cannot conduct electricity if it's not alkaline. That's why salt, you know, people who do plating, it doesn't flow from gold that whatever they're trying to plate they add a little salt to it. Because mm -hmm. the body has to be alkaline to pass electricity or pulse from the, this generator in the brain, the pituitary brain, to about 70, 80 trillion cells in our body. So if the water cannot pass it, that's why salt, it, it, it cannot pass it. If it's not conductive, it cannot pass the signal. So that's why in, uh, uh, for example, the second largest ingredient in human being is salt. And then third one is MSM. MSM is the flexible bonding between the cells. So it gives the attributes to the cells for expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And just imagine if our lung or heart cannot do that. Prostosis. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, you know, these three, uh, it's very important. Cayenne pepper is the best cleanser for the blood vessels. So that's it. It's better than any uh, other uh, drugs you know, that you may take. So if you, you said you like to mix your cayenne pepper and the salt in yogurt? Yes. If you mix it, and different people have, could have different tolerance, but you can start as little and then when you mix it in yogurt, you won't taste the uh, harshness of the cayenne pepper, how hot it is. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good way, you know, to really add some cayenne pepper and salt to your yogurt. Because as you know, yogurt is probably the most precious uh, diet you may have in our, uh, I mean, the most precious uh, dietary uh, food because it has prebiotic and probiotic. And now kefir has friendly yeast and also probiotic. So all of a sudden these probiotic, they feed all the organism we have in our intestinal tract from the mouth to rectum. You know, 85% of our immune system is there. So therefore, you know, we want to feed those so we have a good immune system. Now, what happens in if our body is under, um, uh, it's acidic. All the backup system in the body start functioning to keep us alive. Now, one of the main things you know, that all of a sudden it doesn't function is what autonomic nervous system. Now, we can produce sympathetic, you know, that means increased things by anger, by uh, all kinds of emotional stuff like we talked last time, mm -hmm. to induce endorphin. However, parasympathetic is very difficult to produce in the body, to relax it. And all of a sudden, this whole uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, equilibrium or uh, homeostasis is not there. So all of a sudden, people cannot relax. They have to go either pharmaceutical or speed drugs. That's why uh, all of a sudden, the drug culture comes in, because the person needs relaxation. So they've they interrupted, they, we've interrupted the natural regulatory processes of the body, so we have to use outside stimulants to... The homeostasis, homeostasis of the autonomic nervous system is not there. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, everything is going on backup state. And all of a sudden, when I have that, when that's not there, parasympathetic function of the body is not there. All of a sudden, you know, a person, you know, not that they intend to do that, they develop narcissism or bipolars and all those you know, emotional behavior in order to get that going or relax. Or they go, you know, to things, you know, like uh, marijuana, they think marijuana is relaxing. Marijuana actually puts the sympathetic and parasympathetic out of order so people perceive that they are relaxed. There is a good book, you know, which is since 1902, it says keep off the grass. There's over 50 scientists they have talked about it because all of a sudden it shuts down the ability, um, the ability, um, autonomic nervous system, especially parasympathetic. And uh, it also has imposition on the liver. The, the people you know who have had hepatitis C, they were heavy marijuana smoking. So mm -hmm. it's true that marijuana, they think it's relaxing, but actually it, it cuts their autonomic nervous system. So you were saying that your MSM you take in orange juice also. That's the third one. Yeah. You, you spoke of cayenne, the salt, and now the MSM, which is your part of your daily regimen. These three, yeah. one teaspoon each. And yeah. you said the yogurt is good for the cayenne and the salt. And a yeah. cup of uh, orange juice will take yeah. the bitterness away from the MSM. Yeah, because MSM is extremely better. <laughs> now, your your family was, uh, were they herb farmers? My grandfather was, yeah, herb farmers and herbologist, yeah. Herb farmer and biologist. And biologist. Yeah. Now, were what you... What happened, these things have been in the... This has been in the history for the past thousand years. You know, if you, I'll show you next time, I'll bring the whole collection of Avicenna, which is about a collection encyclopedia of health, about this much, and whole theory. And that was, it was taught until Pasteur, all over Europe, uh, canon of health by Avicenna. And these things are nothing new. You know, it didn't come from me or my grandfather. Or it's been in the book. And if you want to go further out, you know, to the five elements of our diet by Confucius. It talks about uh, wood, air, water, and fire, and then metal, because all of our function is metal, which is minerals. And this is nothing new, you know, so all we have to do is pay attention, not to distort things, you know. So the canon of health? Canon of health by Avicenna. I'll show you one copy. There's a whole collection of it. Okay. This is volume one, and it's translated in English. Can you see it? Yes. Mm hmm That's volume this, one, general medicine. Yeah. And this Canada thing has been health. around past uh, thousand years. And until Pasteur brought the germ theory, because this is based on host theory, and it was taught all over Europe. And then when Pasteur came, he brought the whole concept of germ theory. But it's not the strength of the germ, but rather than the, uh, the resistance of the host that determines acquirement of a disease. Which is very important consideration given the challenge we have with COVID. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I have a regimen for that, you know, because what happened, you know, usually viruses which affect the cold, flu, and all that, they replicate and multiply at the uh, uh, THF 6.5, 6.4, maximum 6.6. .6. So all along the history, you know, when people wanted to prevent viruses, they use zinc and silver. So I'll give you an example. You know, the people who are very wealthy, 
they fed their uh, babies with the silver spoon. Silver spoon. Knowing, <laughs> you know, what happened, that silver dropped a little bit and went in their um, uh, body. And what happened was those kids didn't have any cold or food. Mm -hmm. so, but it turned their blood is a little bit blue because that was a bio, not ionic silver, but it was colloidal silver. In the nature, we get ionic silver. That means the size of the silver that we get from natural process or in the fruits and all that is in a unit called angstrom. Okay, now the one you know that comes from the spoon or pills and all that is in micron size. One micron is equal to 10,000 angstrom. It's like trying to put a watermelon in a baby bag. So wow. it's, that's why it accumulated in their blood and their blood turned blue and it induced it. A complication side effect called angeria. So that's why they call these people blue blood. Blue blood, yes. They were real fit. <laughs> Based on then, a silver spoon. Yeah. <laughs> now, if, if, if they were fit with platinum and gold, that was even better. <laughs> but the silver and zinc does not, no virus can really coexist with silver and zinc. Colloidal silver is um, a micron good thing. Size. You have to use, it's good for external use, but in order to be assimilated into the cell and the body, it has to be angstrom size. That means one to uh, 100,000 uh, 100, of a meter. And well, but if it's micron size, one micron is equal to 10,000 angstrom. That means like BB gun versus a watermelon. So it doesn't go in the cell holes or cell gates. Now colloidal silver, is that something you personally make for your own usage? No, I don't use anything colloidal. I use uh, angstrom ionic. Angstrom uh, ionic. At, yeah. The, the one that comes in the nature because the reason it's not in our foods anymore, it's because we destroyed the soil. There's a symbiotic relationship between soil and plants. The marriage, the sub, the, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, topsoil is the marriage between biology and geology. Now, there's millions of living organisms in these uh, topsoil. Now, if you look, if you have ever broken the roots of a plant, you notice polysaccharide sugar comes out, it leaks. Mm -hmm. There's a leaf in the lip. I mean, the roots, that's why it's wet. So they feed these organisms with polish, with sugar, with polysaccharide. And then in the turn, these organisms, they have a discharge, which is called folic acid. Folic? Vic, yeah. Folic acid, there's a scientist by the name of Dr. Robert Fraser in Oregon. Hopefully he's still alive. He researched this a lot. So what happened, if the soil is clean, you can extract folic acid. Now this folic acid, which is the discharge of these microorganisms, it dissolves metals, let's say if you have calcium in the soil, or zinc or silver in the soil, to angstrom size. Then the plant can absorb it and put it in their apples or grapes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Since this symbiotic relationship between uh, biology and geology to this topsoil has been destroyed, we don't get minerals because all of our food are deprived from minerals. That's why we have to take those supplements. Well, you know, countries like uh, Haiti have a history of the, the people have their growing processes with gardening. They've depleted the topsoil of any nutrients. Yeah. See, the topsoil is the number one. cause of sustainability. The topsoil goes, then you know we don't have mineral. We don't have minerals, what Confucius said 5,000 years ago, we don't have minerals, we can't function because all of our alkalinity, which produces electricity across the cell, through the electrolytes are all metals. So when you're buying fruit and vegetables grown in 
land that's depleted of those minerals, you're really paying for a food that doesn't really have much benefit for you. Two things our food is missing. One is negative ion, mm -hmm. which is the energy of the food. Like you put electrodes, you know, the LED light goes on or the clock mm -hmm. ticks. It's void. It doesn't have it. And then the second one is the mineral, electrolytes. These two are the main, that's why cancer used to be one out of 100, now it's almost one out of two or three. Mm -hmm. Because cancer is a very low energy cell. When, I, when the body is very deprived from energy, the, the ionic elect, electron, then it becomes susceptible and becomes cancerous. So the process of our electromagnetic field and flow, being very conscious about our intake, like we spoke before about our dietary intake, yeah. cumulative or assimilative, alkaline or acidic, yeah. regulatory or stimulatory. Yeah. Because all of a sudden everything is, has to be a stimulated. If I don't have energy, I have to go to the doctor to give me a speed field. I don't have any uh, uh, way, you know, my autonomic nervous system doesn't bring me to parasympathetic. I have to smoke pot. So everything, uh, it's just a yo-yo, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? And that's why all of a sudden the body goes through destruction. Now, in today's world, when we're buying at in the grocery store food that's been picked a long time before we get to it, we're really, again, buying food that is uh, devoid of, of nutrition. Uh, and negative ion, yeah. Negative ion is the electricity that turns that clock on or an LED light. So it doesn't, and it's not anybody's fault because me as a farmer, by the time I get it to you, as fast as I can get it to you, it takes about a week. Mm -hmm. Or maybe three, four days, but then, and the MSM of it is gone. The systemic enzyme, which is the garbage man of the blood. Systemic enzyme, it's a different thing. We can talk about it some other time. But that is in the fruits. And by the time, you know, about a day or two, the systemic enzyme is gone. So the houses that you've designed, you always speak of, you make sure that the homes you design have a, a greenhouse. Yeah. Ability to grow at least some fruits and vegetables. Yeah, all my houses that I have designed, you know, it has a greenhouse over 1,000 square feet at least. Because when you try to get at least most of the basic food, then, you know, you're watching your topsoil there. And sometimes, you know, you, you can put biochar or lime to create more magnetism so it can absorb it from the, uh, from the, from the earth. And then, you know, when you take it apart, within half an hour, you're gonna be eating it. So you are having the MSM, you're having systemic enzyme, uh, and also you have negative ion. Those things are missing link in the food. Now we have a several missing link that unless you, know, you produce it within the distance of your kitchen, there is no way you can get it. I mean, no, nobody's fault, that's the way it is. So that's why I developed about 35 years ago, the whole concept of solar agriculture, solar agriculture architecture, that you produce your basic food as part of the survival. The same way you have to be warm in a house, you have to have good food. And, and it's not the farmer's uh, fault or anybody's fault because everything has to be shipped. So the, the process of people canning food or using like salt to store food? What happens when people think they, they grow the food and then they store it? Well, it has, it has all the other ingredients except some of the missing link in the food like MSM, systemic mm -hmm. enzyme, negative ion. It's missing that. Those are very primary ingredients that the body needs to have electricity. Now, in growing food, you've also made use of the Genesa crystal. Explain how that G Genesa crystal affects the yield. 
Daryl Langham used to teach at the University of Iowa. And he came up with the fact, you know, that certain geometry can really increase the magnetism around the soil. And Janice Crystal actually in Scientific American, some of the other magazines, they say it's the oldest sacred geometry. I have some copy I have saved here. And so what happened, you know, but they thought he was a cuckoo. <laughs> he lost his job, Dr. Daryl Langham. That's what Darryl he's Langham. Daryl Langham, Dr. Daryl Langham. Mm -hmm. So at that time there was a um, famine going in Venezuela. And he went there, you know, he was there uh, and um, with his method of agriculture, increasing magnetism around the soil, you know, um, and Janice Crystal, all of a sudden they produce so much food. I have tested that. I've shown you the picture. You know? Yes. <laughs> you, see, you can do it yourself too. <laughs> you do the same thing. You probably get more than me. But anyway, he got rid of uh, the famine in Venezuela. And then, you know, uh, uh, I think it was around the 1950s or 60s when he came back here. They tried to appreciate his efforts and all that, but then he was too old, you know, and passed away. So, so the basic to... Janisa crystal has made of copper? Yes, it's a copper, but what it does, it's a geometry that um, it induces magnetism around something. They say every one foot, it affects about uh, one mile around. It. So you built a very, very big Janisa crystal with Dr. Flanagan. Oh yeah, I have pictures of it. Yeah, <laughs> it, I mean that yeah, one I was I it that here. was long, big enough for you to stand inside it. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the biggest. Uh, actually, you know, Dr. Flanagan wanted everything the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of uh, range of effect was, was that one producing? Yeah, that was you know everything around him. You know the whole Sedona. <laughs> you know, usually, I use it with about one quarter of an inch thick. When I used I used to make it for many years, one quarter of an inch uh, uh, diameter uh, copper pipe. The one we made for him is the pipe is one and a half inch, <laughs> uh. <laughs> and it took about a week. You know, we had to put ladder to go up there. I think I sent you some pictures of it. You can maybe use it for the show. Yeah. Yes. So the normal the. Janisa crystal has how many rings? You know, it's four rings, but there are also, you know, you can do four rings is very difficult because a lot of people who make it, it doesn't braid. If it doesn't braid, it's not uh, in a state of homeostasis or equilibrium. If it because doesn't braid? Want, it, when it braids, that means it go every loop. If you want, I'll go get one and bring it to show it to you. Yeah. But anyway, every loop, goes in and out, in and out. It's not all of a sudden one loop goes all over one and then everything. If it's that it doesn't work if it's not braided. So the braiding of copper increases its yeah. energetic field? Yeah, well what happens, you know, it brings it in the state of equilibrium, there's four rings. But uh, there are four rings, you know, that uh, uh, and sometimes for me and maybe my two of my kids are, used to help me, you could make one a day because braiding it and get it exact is not easy. But if you don't braid it, you can do it in half an hour. Mm -hmm. Now, are there but sources it, for Janisa crystals that are done properly? Are, are they easy to find these days? Well, I have not seen it on the um, internet. Everything is not braided. Because not they they can't afford because I have sold pieces you know, like five hundred dollars a piece or something. I just sold one about four hundred, a small one to somebody. But what happened is uh, uh, it takes about a day at least, if not more. Mm -hmm. So each loop has an in and out aspect to it, and that's very tricky how to do it. <laughs> yeah, you have to. I mean, I've done it so many times, it's easier for me, but if somebody has to figure it out how to do it, they put it together and it's good. And then, you know, also you can have it, uh, I have a big one in my living room, which is six rings. And six rings that has to go braided 
it's very difficult. It takes a lot of work to build it. Wow. And so the, the person that innovated this was, again, is it Lang? Well, he is the one who discovered it. But if, you, if I find this, they say it's the oldest geometry in the history. There is an article in Scientific America and also uh, Science Magazine. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, this is the oldest they could find. And I actually in some under the water in the ocean near uh, China, they have found some. Uh, but this is the oldest geometry that they say, you know, they could uh, find out. There. And give us the gentleman's name again. It was, what was his name? Dr. Daryl Langham. Daryl Langham. Yeah. And he did amazing work in Venezuela when in the 1940s? I think it's, I forgot exactly. Uh, I have it on the shelf, you know, but to be exactly, I, it, it was in 40s and 50s, you know, that he did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go on internet, you may find his name, Dr. Daryl Langham. All right. Well, that, Janisa Crystal in combination with biochar is very potent mixture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is biochar and lime rock. It induces a field, you know, which Dr. Philip Callahan, who did many years of research on paramagnetic and diamagnetic. You see, like, you know, for example, our nervous system has synthetic and parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. material in building and agriculture is also could be paramagnetic or diamagnetic. So through his work in paramagnetic material, it was very conductive and absorbent of magnetism. So all function, biological functions in creation are magnetic. Now around our planet, there's the magnosphere Absolutely, because this is contrary to Einstein theory, the solar radiation is not a sine wave that we measure by frequency, like you said, 300,000 uh, miles per second when it goes. It's a, a spiral. So now all, our yeah, all the... Uh, uh, flow of all things in the nature is by rotation, rotation and crystals. It's not by scenic oscillation. So we can define emission of the sun or moon or uh, mine or emission from you or me in oscillation of frequency. You have pulse, I have pulse. You vibrate, you don't oscillate. Right. Everything in the nature vibrates. They don't oscillate, nothing oscillates. Oscillating virtual reality that we assume everything is duality of positive and negative. And the oscillatory is, is mechanical and man made. Yeah. And then that virtuality has led us into duality. Everything is duality. And that has become overload, our perceptive and cognitive overload. Now, you know, every if you just tell everybody, you know, oh, positive and negative does it, or the computer is based on duality of the binary system, you know, they may uh, 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 laugh at you. <laughs> well, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Well, say, uh, it's better to walk alone than with the crowd going in the wrong direction. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Well, we're getting close to our time to close our discussion today. We, I, I thank you again for um, a lot of very powerful soul food, soul food for thought. I think we give people a lot of new information and new ways of feeling inspired in life and options for living a beautiful life and homostasis with uh, yeah. harmony in, in all aspects of our existence. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not uh, Sularji. <laughs> soul and synergy yeah and then if we have to maybe something a note you know that we can uh, remember from this session we have today it's 
a component of exist existential reality is time and space. That's why there are certain things like a spirit and God, we cannot define it in time and space. Because all of our perception, cognition, if anything you define, anything you express, your impression, expression, everything is in time and space. And that's the nature of our creation. Maybe on other planets, you know, there are beings in a time and space is not part of their component. Well, you know, earlier we spoke about seven times the point of maturity is the time that we really should be in existence. Longevity. Yeah. Our longevity. So a human being gets mature around 19. So seven times 19 is yeah. our, what we should be going. That's our, that's our goal, isn't it? They said, no, this is a joke. <laughs> they say no one mature the body. About 120. That's why he lived to be 900. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's okay to be, uh, what do they say, when you're a little behind the times? You don't mature so fast, you're a slow, <laughs> slow learner. <laughs> slow down my maturity to, to affect my longevity. Yeah, but then again, but, longevity, that that factor of longevity is the which is the seven in all living things, you know, dogs, cats, and horses, and all that, turtles, turtles. It's all if we are in the range of alkalinity, which was assigned to our creation, because every species has a different assignment or uh, alignment for that uh, longe uh, for their uh, function. Like cold, so that's white, our guideline to make sure we are staying in that pH value. Yeah, because every it's like airplane, they're all going at the same to level so they don't collapse. Right, right. All right, well, we will uh, continue next time, same yeah. same time next week. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, and we will, uh, I will say, fi fi for now. Yes, fi fi. <laughs> fi <Fight> for <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for here and now. But until we meet again, this has been Louis Vere Blanche thanking you for listening to Conversations with Elders on Glastonbury Radio 432. Bless you. Quantum physics in the kitchen sink The energy that follows the thoughts you think Quantum Cosmic sea, laws of nature too heavy for me. It's too cosmic, much too cosmic, too cosmic for me. Much too cosmic, too cosmic, much too cosmic for me. Strange feeling inside of me